Couch, dog, me, palaces. Hey there, Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another awesome finger style guitar lesson right here on Lickin' Riff, in which we'll explore gospel style blues in finger style. It sounds daunting, but it's actually a lot of fun. You don't have to do any soloing other than the chords themselves because the chords are so rich. Uh, I'm talking about something like this. complicated if you like but I see no reason to because the harmonies themselves kind of blend into one another and um, the idea behind this is actually pretty simple uh, you know C A minor F and G you know this chord progression C A minor F and G now if you take each of these chords and add a kind of um, a chord that leads into the next chord, then you end up with what I just played. So we start with C, and then we have A minor, so E7 would lead to A minor because that's the dominant chord for A minor. Now, it doesn't matter whether you know the theory or not, but um, it's the fifth chord of the A minor scale, and when you play it as a seventh chord, it wants to resolve itself to A minor, back to A minor. So C, and then I add E7. I'm playing E with three on the second string and the open fourth string. Okay? And then this leads to A minor again. And then we have F, right? So the chord that leads to F, the dominant chord for F, is C7. So I'm playing C7 next. So it's C with three on the third string. And then you can play F like this, or like this, and you can open the E string for F major seven. Okay, and then you have a few options. You can turn this into F minor, and then go back to C. You can take F, you can do the F sharp bass, okay, by adding four on the fourth string, okay, this, and then you play G. Now this leads you chromatically G, it's F, F sharp, G. Now this creates a kind of a diminished chord, okay? but without sounding diminished, without sounding like this, too sinister. So you get F with F sharp as a high bass note, you know, on four on the fourth string. And then G, and then you can turn it into G7 by adding one on the E string. You can play three on the B string, so you have one and three. And then this leads back into C because G7 is the dominant for C. So that's the basis for everything we're doing here. Now, the idea uh, behind the exploration would be to just try the different endings. Now, you can do F and then you can do D over F sharp, like this, okay? Or, with the open E string, then you have D9 over F sharp. So it's D with two on the sixth string for F sharp, okay? With the open E string. So you get, and you don't have to play the E string. You can play strings two, three, four, and six, and then you go to G. Now this serves two purposes because you have F, then you have the chromatic move on the bass for F sharp, and you have D, which leads you to G. D is the dominant for G. You can play D7 over F sharp, but then you'd get the F sharp diminished. Okay? Again, you'd get the diminished sound. Okay, so that's why I'm playing D and not D7. If you've been paying attention um, to the theoretical explanation, albeit a very short explanation, but if you're looking for a seventh chord, doing a D7 chord here wouldn't really work if you have the F sharp on the bass. So you can do D7 and then lead to G. Or D minor 7 and then lead to G. 
Okay, D7 would be 2, 1, 2, and D minor 7 would be 1, 1, 2. And then you have G and then C. So let's see how all of this works. Now, the idea is to arpeggiate the chords and just create a shuffle rhythm very, very delicately. Bam, ba, bam, ba, bam, ba, bam. And anything would work as long as you're confident in your rhythm. right away and do the F F minor C line and then E7 you don't have to keep a straight um, length for the for the same chord progression you can shorten some chords prolong other chords zero on the E string for G7 and then three two one on the second string back down to C so okay or a straight uh, major scale sound um, okay I got myself a little bit confused landed in the wrong place of the okay. um, you can do you can do the D minor 7 okay you can do a high A minor okay you can do a high E7 you can do a high C7 okay um, so for A minor it would be 5-5-5 five, five, five and the 5th string, for E7 it would be 4-3-4 four, four and the 6th string, and for C7 it would just be a barred C7, bar on 3, A7 shaped. So you can do uh, something like this. See? C, E7. to the D leading back to C, so you can do a chromatic move, C7, uh, that was a C at 13, it was with 5 on the E string, that also works, hey, you can do a solo out of it, <clears throat> um, C7, and then add the C sharp bass note, okay, again, chromatically, Okay, three, four, five, and five being D, you can play the open D string. So C7, and then this becomes C sharp diminished, and then D minor 7, or D7. Okay, I suggest that if you do this, play the D minor 7. that high F sharp note, you don't really want to play F and then the low F sharp bass, it's too dirty, it kind of conflicts with one another, so, okay, this is the preferred sound, okay, so, it's not as if I'm being lazy here, um, because then the only possibility you have other than the D over F sharp would be the F sharp diminished. So you might like that sound, but 
I'm trying to keep it, you know, pleasant. And this sort of chord um, is too sinister for this. This is a very... sort of thing, a very laid back. Okay? You can also do F, F minor, C, and then G, or G7 back to C again, instead of starting from the, from that C. Okay? Or you can go to the E, seven to create tension to go to a minor so I'm just giving you options here um, to explore okay. you can add blues licks if you like but again I think it's not necessary uh, because the chords kind of speak for themselves here so, uh, thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. There's a ton of free lessons over here. And even though everything is for free, if you want to give something back uh, to Lick and Riff, uh, everything goes right back into your guitar education, into making these videos. So uh, you have a Patreon link in the description, or you can donate uh, via PayPal, via the donation button on the Lick and Riff website, the old donation button. So thank you in advance uh, for your generosity and any donation you choose to make. I'll see you in the next lesson. Enjoy. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.